Mammoth 4Runner here, and I am here to break down my 2014 Toyota 4Runner SR5. start out with the suspension and pretty much everything that you see right here uh, so first we've got the king the two and a half inch with the remote reservoirs I got the adjusters we have an icon upper control arm All right, with the added weight from the front bumper which we'll be getting into next I went ahead and decided to upgrade my coils um, my suspension originally came with the 550 pound rated coils uh, I went ahead and went with the 650 I know 700 was an option, but talking to King and a few other people, uh, 650 seemed like the right way to go. Down to the spindle gussets, which I got from Total Chaos. I was able to remove my front sway bar, allowing me to get better articulation when off-road. Also down here I have the Wheelers Off-Road Super Bump Stops. Much more beefier than your stock bump stop. Coming up a little bit here, we have ARC splash guards. The only way to go for splash guards is ARC. Um, you've seen the stock splash guards. They're flimsy, they suck. Um, I'm really glad I was able to upgrade to these as well. Shout out ARC splash. Now coming a little further, for my control arms, I have the aluminum RCI skid plates just to protect everything going on down here. You move on over uh, towards the center, I've got the RCI steel skid plate. I originally had an aluminum, but out on the trail, rocks, um, I decided the steel was gonna be a better option for me. So moving back from the engine skid plate, it follows into the transmission skid plate. And then further on beyond that, there is a transfer skid plate that I currently don't have, but we'll be getting that soon. Um, next to that, I have the aluminum gas skid plate. And beyond that, on the diff, I have the um, RCI rear diff skid plate. And here is the aluminum gas tank skid. As you can tell, it does come in handy quite a bit. And in the rear here, I do have the rear link RCI skids as well. So after doing Holcomb for the first time, um, pretty much all my stock skids were completely toast. So I figured after that, upgrade everything I could down here. Went to the back here. Uh, first you're gonna notice my three inch Icon rear springs and I actually upgraded to the three inch. My setup originally came with the two inch icons. Um, after doing some research um, and a little bit of testing off road, I decided to go ahead and go with the three inch. Um, I immediately noticed the difference uh, moving to the three inch, especially in ride quality and, and off road and how bumpy everything is. Um, these springs can handle the extra weight. So when I did get the rear bumper, I knew I was already set up for that. When it comes to the bump stops, I went with Timberin bump stops. They are the rear extended. Um, another one of those big, big differences, um, especially in ride quality when I'm going off road, um, these things work uh, 100%. And anything to kind of help with my up travel, especially with the bigger tires. Another upgrade coming here pretty soon is gonna be the, the Panhard correction. Just kind of one of those things I just haven't gotten around to doing. Um, but that's gonna be coming up here pretty soon. Um, also, if you notice the hydraulic bump stops under the coils there, um, I doubt I ever really use those, especially with these extended bump stops. Um, I got the hydraulic way before I got the timber in, um, but you know, they're free, so uh, Buddy hooked it up, so I just threw them in there for kind of shits and giggles, um, but they look sick. For my lower control arms, Freedom Off-Road Adjustable Control Arms definitely beefens everything up. My stock ones were originally pretty beat up from the trail, so I decided to upgrade to Freedom Off-Road. Alright, moving on to the front. 
I have the Addicted Off-Road Full Bumper. I decided to go with the full bumper just for better protection. Uh, the approach angle, you can't beat it. For the type of wheeling I was doing, I figured it would be a better option than the Low Pro that I had before. Over the windows here, I have the well visors going on all four of the windows. I really like the, the lower stance of these. Up front here on the hood, um, I actually have ABS, the bug deflector. For me, the bug deflector has always been more about looks. I just like the way it kind of brings the whole front end together. Now moving on to the hood, I do have an SR5 but I have always loved the hood scoop, so I decided to upgrade to the TRD off-road hood with the hood scoop. For snorkel, I have four-wheel drive off-road snorkel kit. I love it, it lined up very beautifully. Um, up top, the only way to go to keep your air filter clean is snorkel upgrade. Highly recommend it, absolutely love this thing. Now up top, I have the Ecotech roof rack so when choosing a roof rack i decided to go with ecotech um, before this i having a prinsu rack which i really love too but having an opportunity to work with ecotech um, i've been able to test out this roof rack uh, for quite a while now and i really i really enjoy it um, the mounting options can be a little different and a little confusing comp coming from the Prinsu, um, but honestly, it's just more of a larger bolt, which in some cases can be a little annoying going from a, a one inch bolt with the Prinsu to a, you know, like a two inch bolt, three inch bolt with, um, with the Ecotech. All right, now moving on to the rear, one of my favorite additions to the 4Runner would be the rear bumper. This is a new in rear bumper i hope i didn't butcher the name but it opens up from right here with this latch bring it on open drop it in easy i love the high clearance look that the bumper gives um, one of the options was a high lift jack mount now with my ladder it was creating a problem so nguyen actually made a custom mount for my high lift uh, which attaches here to my c4 ladder I actually have a Flowmaster Delta Series 40. Um, I've always really enjoyed it. Uh, the sound is, isn't is anything too obnoxious. It's got a nice little growl to it, which is exactly what I was looking for. So shout out to Flowmaster for that. On the rear tire, I've got Crash Pad um, for my you know, trash on the trail. Um, I actually use this for tools. I use it for air hoses, pretty much anything. There's so many different pockets coming in and out of here. Up at the top, I got straps. Um, Pretty much anything I put in there, I usually do. Now coming into the rear, Forerunner Off-Road USA. I have their Molly panels up here on the side. Holds all of my recovery gear. Also one of my newest favorite additions to the truck is my canvas back cargo liner. I was getting a lot of damage just from wear and tear over the years back here, so it gives a great option to keep things protected. Now for rock sliders, I actually have perfectly built rock sliders. They haven't let me down or made it through everything I've put them through. I always like the low pro look of them. Uh, down on the sp uh, sponsor banner here, a couple of my favorites. I have Alpha Rex, King, Nitto, Icon, RCI, and of course, Jax Wraps, who uh, did all the wrapping on this truck. Wrap that in the bl black glossy. Um, I actually just painted the Toyota letters orange, just kind of match everything going on. Um, up top on the hood, um, matte black, just down the center, fiery orange for the hood scoop. Side mirrors, I actually, it was a quick little thing with me and my buddy. We actually just threw on um, some fiery orange. Now my emblem, 
Kempfer Designs. I actually made this custom SR5 um, emblem in the TRD riding. I added the off-road because with everything I've added to the truck, I feel it deserves the title. Now, people are always asking me, how do I keep the paint so clean? But if you do look close, I have the normal, normal scratches that kind of come with the territory of all this. Um, but honestly, I'm careful, you know, I'm, I'm careful when I'm out there. I don't, I choose not to go into to big bushes and, and get it all scratched up and everything. Um, sometimes I know it's unavoidable and that's where I've got what I've got here. Um, you know, and again, it's just more kind of a close look, but I keep it clean. Um, after all the trails I do, I always, um, clean it immediately. I never let it sit really overnight, um, maybe a couple times. Um, but it's not bad. It, it has stayed, stayed pretty fresh um, throughout everything. Yeah, just a little scratches in here. Another good way is, uh, Editing your photos really well, you don't see any of this shit. <laughs> Alright, now moving on to lights. I got a lot of lights on here, so I'm just gonna go through each one of them. So up front here I have the KC highlights, diode dynamic CC2s for the ditch lights, diode dynamic CC2s. Up top on the on the uh, roof rack, I have Cali Rays LED 42 inch light bar. Then coming up on the sides here, I have Vico Off-Road 6-inch LED lights. I have two on the other side, two on this side, so I get that nice view coming all the way down. Coming into the back here, I have um, our LAS Fit Auto Lighting Pods. And in the back, I have Extreme LED 6-inch light bar. major upgrades were the headlights. As you know, the stock headlights are not good on the 4Runner. Uh, I decided to go with Alpha Rex. They are the all LED. They have the white daytime running light. And if you want to follow me to the back, another one of my favorite upgrades of the truck will be the tail lights, which are also Alpha Rex. So I've had the pleasure of working with Alpha Rex for a while now. and. I was actually one of the first ones to have these tail lights and they didn't disappoint. Alpha X and quality um, and that OEM feel is is what I love and that's I've, I've honestly I've had zero issues with either of these lights since the, the day I've gotten them so really stoked on these one of my favorite um, favorite mods for sure is the headlights and tail lights. Now my rock lights here You'll notice my placement isn't where you usually put rock lights, but my secret here is, and everyone always kind of laughs at this, but it's glue. Um, when I first got the lights, I didn't really like that I had to drill to get them put on. So I was trying to think of a different way of mounting these and um, of course I was over at Home Depot and I saw some industrial strength glue. So I thought I'd give it a shot. And I have had these rock lights on here now for a few years and the glue holds them. Um, it's not going anywhere. I've had to take them off before. Just get like a screwdriver and kind of pry it off. Um, and if you really want to, you can take off the glue but when mounting them it makes it super simple because you can literally kind of move this around with the glue and kind of see where the light comes down and that's my my secret with my rock lights um, just glue glue them up no drill it works for me
All right, coming down to the tires, uh, Nitto Trail Grapplers, 35 by 1250. Uh, these are 17 inch wheels. They are, they are the RR03 Rider Off-Road with a negative 10 offset. At the moment, I do have two inch Bora wheel spacers. Now I know everybody trips out on wheel spacers, but as long as you don't buy eBay or cheap, I say you're pretty solid, especially when you're going with Bora. Now the spacers, are temporary for the moment which will be up for sale here soon if anyone's interested um, but I have put them through the ringer and I'm impressed I haven't had any issues like I said um, it's it's the quality of the spacer and the install process um, as far as changes there will be some new wheels with more of an aggressive offset um, maybe even some bigger tires. We'll see how that kind of goes. Now sitting behind the wheel are SP Performance Rotors. I've been happy with the rotors. Um, had them out for almost a year. They still look pretty fresh. They are drilled and slotted. If I could go back, I probably wouldn't be doing the slotted, probably just the drilled, just from the research that I've personally done with uh, what I really actually need on on the truck. Now to fit these tires and everything I got going on, well, I went ahead and pushed in all the pinch welds. And I actually added a one inch body lift just to give me a little bit more space. Now the big question is, do I rub? And yes, daily driving, U-turns, no. But when I am off road, I do get a little bit of rub up here in my, my lower fender. Now, my inner fender wall here is where all my rubbing comes from. Um, it's really not that severe at the moment. Um, it's just more kind of annoying. But this all right here will eventually be all cut out. So this will be cut out. And then one day, all of this will be cut out um, to get those bigger tires um, to really fit nice and snug. And then maybe long travel one day, I don't know. Well, it, it always keeps going, so we'll, we'll kind of take it one step at a time, just like I've pretty much done everything else. Uh, but yeah, this right here will be all gone, uh, hopefully sooner than later. I did cut the fender up, just to give, get a little bit more of a high clearance. Which for that high clearance cut, we just followed this line right here. And see, it's all, I kind of got, got it messed up here when I did the cut, so I got to get this all rewrapped. Um, and just more sanding to get really get it nice and straight. Uh, I just really haven't done it yet, but it's good for right now. Um, it took away any rubbing that I had on the outer fender here. So that's the high clearance um, fender cut. Also down here is my DRT Fabrications uh, body mount relocate. You know, besides my uh, fender rubbing, my inner fender right here rubbing, like I was saying, um, at extreme angles and extreme flex, I was uh, actually hitting my body mount. And even though I had a body mount chop before, I had a very extreme body mount chop, um, I would still hit it. So I'm really glad I was able to upgrade the DRT. Um, it definitely allows me to to fit the 35s. Now with the big tires, the lifts, the bumpers, everything I've going on in the truck, um, I am re-geared at 48 gears. I have Yukons in the front and I have Revolution in the rear. Um, also in combination, I have a rear Eaton E-Locker. I do have an OV tune on here um, from Modded by Phil. And I've really enjoyed the tune. Um, it hasn't made much of a difference, honestly, on my miles per gallon. But the, which is kind of what I was hoping for because of all the weight. Um, I know the tunes are still in kind of like the early phases. So I'm pretty excited to see some other tunes coming out here. Um, I'm working with Yoda Works um, currently, and they're actually coming out with um, a tune that's been on the dyno. They got all these stats for it. So I'm really curious to see what that's going to bring to the table um, as far as tunes for the, for the fifth gen. Under the hood. I have a Switch Pro controlling all of my lights. Ignore my nest of wires, still working on that. Um, over here, I have my Smittybilt air compressor. 
and I actually have that just mounted in with a C4 um, battery mount. And then coming over to everything that powers this truck, um, I wanted something with long life that I know wasn't gonna let me down, uh, especially controlling all these lights. So I decided to go with full throttle battery. Full throttle is heavy duty, so I figured it'd be a great addition to the truck and it was gonna last me the longest. My experience with full throttle so far has been really good. Um, I've had it for about a year now and you know whether I leave the truck idling on the trail or just keys in it whatever um, I just feel like I really don't have to worry with this battery uh, it's all rusted I never painted that <laughs> guys so that was my build thank you for sticking around i hope you made it to the end of the video um you know i love forerunners i love the sport it keeps it going with every single upgrade um, every time i'm on the trail i figure out something new to upgrade and that is why the truck looks the way it looks today all the build i encourage you to follow my instagram um, at mammoth forerunner i'm going to leave all the links in the description uh, below of everything that you've seen on the truck here today um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment, like, subscribe. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.